I was in Nigeria watching games, Camp Nou, San Siro, Aris, Alena, and everything. I was like, Pfft. so me, myself, I'll be there now, you know, watching the games, uh, playing the games live with Lewandowski, Usman Dibele, Pedri, Gavi, and everything. I was like, wow. I was so amazed. Like, I was like, is this a dream or what? Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be watching or listening to us from. My name is Ayotzi, and this is the home of Nigerian Football Podcast. As always, with me, I have a special guest. Um, he is a player for Ferenc Varus in the Hungarian League. Um, he's a Nigerian player, of course. He's a striker. Um, I'm talking about Fortune Bassi. Um, Fortune, welcome to the show. Uh, good evening. Hello. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, um, Fortune, thank you for taking the time to speak with me, to speak to the fans as well. Um, I just want to learn more about you. We want to learn your story, you know, and we want to also just catch up on things that have been happening in your career so far. Um, but before we get into the football talk, I always just like to ask my guests, you know, how are you? How is the family? You know, health, family is the most important thing. So how, how is everything on that side? I'm okay. I'm doing great. You know, um, I'm married. I have a wife. She's fine. But now she's in Nigeria because now we are in pre-season, so she can't be here. Mm. So fine. Everyone is doing great. Uh, we appreciate life and we thank God for everything. I'm happy to hear that, you know, happy to hear that the family is well. Um, okay. Um, let's get into the conversation now. Um, I'll start by asking you some questions about your, your background. Um, and the first yeah. one I have is, you know, can you tell us um, where did you grow up in Nigeria? What was it like for you growing up in Nigeria? Was life easy? Was life hard? And how did you start playing football? Uh, basically, yeah, uh, I'm from um, Edo State, you know, Benin City. Okay. That's where I was born. And I grew up, uh, I grew up like all my life in Benin City. Um, but originally, I'm from like my tribe. I'm from Akwaibu, you know? Mm. So, but... I live all my life in Edo States. So that's where I started playing football from the grass youth. Uh, you know, it's life, it's difficult. You know, it's, we are Africans. There's no mm. how any African player can say it's easy for him playing football in Nigeria. It's mm. always difficult. You know, there's a lot of um, uh, pressure from the family. You know, they want you to go to school. They want mm. you to start something, learn business, learn work, or just try to do something. At first, you know, no parents want their kids to play football, you know? The yeah. first thing is like, ah, I want you to finish university. I want you to proceed in fathers, you know? And a lot of things. Same goes with me, you know? My parents didn't want me to play football at first, you know? Mm. They were like adamant about me going to school. And even my dad, they didn't want me to play football. But uh, my dad, I was like, uh, I went to, there was one time I was playing for uh, the uh, Shai Amuduk Academy. We play in uh, Ogbe Stadium. I was there, you know, for trials and everything. So I think I was like the highest goal scorer. So they, they published my name on the newspaper. Mm. So before I came back from the camp, my dad saw my name, his name on the newspaper. I was like, saw my pictures and everything so this was like what convinced him like ah so my son you know everyone was like ah look at your son like in pigeon ah see your picking see your picking away see your picking for newspaper or something you know stuff like that so then my dad was like okay since this is like good so he can start to play football you know so mm. it's really difficult you know but thank god for where we are now mm. Amazing. And I mean, that's, that's how it is with Nigerian parents. It's when they start to see that you are achieving a little bit, they're like, okay, okay. Maybe, maybe this thing is actually a good decision that, that he's making, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let me, how about, do you have siblings? You know, do they also play football? Do they play other no, sports? Uh, I have like, we have four in the family, two boys and two girls. But uh, I'm the third to the last. Oh. So my elder brother plays football, but just, you know, just like um, for fun, not like uh, on a professional level. Yeah. But in my family, I'm just the only one playing football, you know, so. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, and as a young boy in Nigeria, I mean, we watch a lot of football in the other, you know, European leagues, 
Premier League, La Liga, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, what football team did you support, you know, as a young boy growing up? The truth is, like, even when I was in Nigeria, even now, but now it's a little bit different. I don't put my everything, you know, like, I support this team a lot. But before when I was in Nigeria, you know, I was supporting Chelsea. I love Chelsea so much. Mm. Yeah, I lost Chelsea so much. Even when we lost the finals against Manchester United, I think 2012. It's yeah, in the finals of Champions League. I went home, I was crying, you know. So I love Chelsea so much because of Didi Drogba, you know, there's a lot of stars there. So I was, even now I support them, but not that much, like, um, you know. Yeah. So nice. I mean, I'm also a Chelsea fan. I'm still a Chelsea fan, so. We can we can relate on that on that level. Um, okay, and you mentioned Didier Drogba, you know, but was there any other player that you really liked, you know, watching growing up that maybe maybe you were trying to play like them, you know? Was there any other person? Uh, play maybe sometimes, but I I love like Eden Hazard when he was playing Chelsea. Mm. For me, it was top. At at this time, he was really really good player, like top, because I like the way he takes the ball, drag the players, and create some chances, go one v one. So I like this kind of players, you know. So mm. Inaza was one of my players. I was I watched a lot, you know. I like so Inaza. I say mm, amazing. I mean, I mean, anybody that's watching this, that's listening to this, can attest to how good. Hazard was, especially when he was playing for Chelsea. So you can't go wrong um, with Eden Hazard. Um, okay. And you you initially spoke about, you know, how you were you were playing and then you got published on the newspaper. Um, and then that's when your dad started to really support you. But let me yeah. now ask you, you know, for you as the person that's chasing this career, that's chasing this dream, when did you really, really start to believe that you can make it in this football? Because there's so many boys playing football in Nigeria. So when yeah. did you really start to believe that you can make it? See, the truth is like, when I was playing football, I already had my mind, everything on football, you know, I wanted to play football, I wanted to play in Europe. So I gave everything, you know, I was, I think I was training maybe twice, three times in a day, mm. because uh, basically my team was training like six in the morning. So mm. five thirty in the morning, we start to train, you know, I before the even before we start training, I go for personal workouts, you know. Wow. In the afternoon by three, I train, you know. I was like I was ready, you know, I was preparing my mind, you know, because you know, when you love something and if you want something, you have to give everything. You have to fight, you have to yeah, we know it's God, you have to pray too, you know, but uh you have to give your all, everything, you know. So I was giving everything. I was so ready, like really ready. I I didn't play like the Nigerian league. I didn't want to play. I had opportunities to play, but I didn't want to play. Even when I went to, uh, I think I played some few games. I think one or two games uh, for Dynamite. I don't know if you know Dynamite FC. I don't know. Mm. Now they changed the name. I don't know. But I played like one or two games, just two. But I was ready, you know. I see a lot of players who want to play football, but they play, but still they had, uh, should I say, enjoyment. You know, they want to mix everything, like training and football, mm. having fun. It's difficult like this, you know. So I know it's good, but it's difficult when you start to mix the training and enjoyment, pleasure and everything. So... For me, I was really ready. I was preparing my mm. mind, and I know I knew I would uh, I would play football like in Europe. I knew that. Yeah, mm. amazing. I love to hear it that you were focused on your goal, you know, and you knew what you were working towards. And like yeah. you said, you know, um, in this life, really, when you want to be, when you want to achieve something, sometimes you have to make sacrifices, you know. And that sacrifice, yeah. maybe when your friends are going to party, you are going to training or you are going yes. to sleep. Because you need yeah. the rest, you know things like that. So it's 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 nice to hear um that from you. Um okay, so let me now ask you before we go into your your professional journey, your football journey. Um, if somebody has never watched you play football before, you know they are watching this interview now and they're like, ah, oh, I've not seen this guy playing before. How would you describe your your style of play? How would you describe your game as a football player? Uh, usually some 
now I came to Europe, everyone thinks I'm like a point striker, like a target man, you know. Yeah. But I don't. I like to be like a uh, to play like a free player, like in uh, behind the striker, for example. Yeah. Like I can go to the left, go to the right. This is how I love to play. So, but most times when I here in Europe, they always want to play me like a striker. Maybe because they feel uh, I'm fast because I'm really fast. I have a pace, so they want me to go like behind the defenders, you know. But me, I like to play with the ball. I like to mm. get the ball on my foot. I don't like um, long balls, uh, you know. So it's always difficult for me. Like like the previous team I went, they were like playing the long balls. So it was really, really difficult for me because I, I like the ball on my feet because I like to show qualities and everything. Yeah. So that's how I play. I just, you know, go all around the pitch, you know, just give me the free roll. Mm. I mean, and um, that's, you know, in Nigeria, I feel like when you start playing football in Nigeria, you have to, first of all, know how to use your feet, you know, and play ball, you know, and yeah. that's one of the things that a lot of Nigerian players have. When you get to Europe, maybe they can turn you into something else. But yeah, you know, even, yeah. even, even as a defender in Nigeria, you still have to be able to move the ball. You still have yeah. to be able to do some skills, you know, things, things like that, you know. So um, I'm, I'm not surprised. Uh, okay, let's, let's now go into your football journey. So from a young boy, training so hard, you know, practicing every day, multiple times a day, how did you get your break? You know, how did you get that opportunity to now become a professional? Um, I think I was playing for um, Royal Force. The club is like Royal Force in gra- grassroots team in mm. uh, Benin City. So my uh, manager now, so he was friends with the coach now, like in Royal Force. So it, I think he told the coach, like he wants like two players. He wants to take for trials to, I think it was Czech Republic. That was my first uh, trip, and okay, I was at the, I was sitting on the bench in the first half. I was sitting on the bench. I don't know who he came to watch, but me, I knew it wasn't me, hundred percent. It wasn't me. I think they told him about someone else. You understand? Mm. So I was on the bench. So they put me in in the second half. I was playing from the wing when I was in uh, playing in Nigeria. I was playing from the left wing. So I think I scored. Two goals, two amazing goals, like track the right back, go inside, shoot and everything. So my manager was like, ah, no, no, no. I want this. Is this guy I want. So mm. he, didn't, they didn't, he didn't pick the person he came for. So he had to change his mind. Ah, no, I want this striker. I want, I want him. I want him. He's fast. I, want the, I like the way he plays. Mm. So that's how... Uh, they told me, ah, okay, uh, someone liked your game. Um, he's going to prepare you uh, a visa so you can travel for trials. Uh, I was so happy, you know. I was like, wow. So finally, you know, I was like, I can't wait. I was like preparing my mind and everything. I think uh, we went for trials, Czech Republic. It was winter, you know. I, I haven't traveled before. It's my first time. It was so cold, so we played, uh, I think it was like one month trials. And we played, was it two games? Or I think two games? Three games, sorry, three games. So my manager took me and one player from Better Insurance, one striker, and one other player, I don't know this guy. So we were like three players for the trials. We went to Czech Republic. So to cut the show, uh, the long story short, it was like, they picked just two of us, me and the guy from Better Insurance. Mm. And I, I, I won't lie, it was really cold. And the first game was really, really difficult for me because all my leg was so, you know, stiff because of the cold and everything. I think I only played really good in the last game. I think I mm. scored one goal. So I was surprised when they said, ah, they picked you and everything. I was like, oh, I was so amazed. You know, I was happy i was like ah thank you jesus finally i would leave nigeria and i would just you know focus on football finally you know that was it you know i was so happy and i told my mom my mom was like ah you know african parents she was crying thank yeah. god for everything you know so it was that that was it 
And um, just to be sure, which club was this that you went for the trial and got picked? Uh, Bohemias. It was Bohemias Pra. Bohemias. Mm. I was. I went there for under the twenty one um, trainings. Yeah, Bohemias. And after mm. I went back to, we came back to Nigeria because it was just one month visa. So we had to come back to prepare the long stay, you know. And yeah. the long stay, it took about one year for us to get, you know, because wow. we were not getting the things right. Like we go to the embassy and they were like, ah, you didn't do the translating. You didn't do the stopping. You didn't do a lot of things. So wow. I nearly gave up because I was so, wow. I was confused. I cried because I was like, ah, one year I'm, I'm still in Nigeria. You know, you know the feeling you already, you went there already and you, you saw how you, the feelings and everything. Yeah. And now you are back in Nigeria for one yeah. year and you are still. And they just called me like, my agent, my manager just called me like, ah, they grant you guys visa. So you guys should go to Abuja. And from there, you guys are traveling. I was like, Pfft. from there, I was so happy, you know, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. And and I can, I can imagine when you've gone for the trial and then you come back, even people in Nigeria will be asking you, ah, what do you yeah. do now? <laughs> yeah. You know, even when you're trying to tell them like, ah, they picked me, but they won't believe because, bro, you are here for like yeah, one year. So what's going on? So you're trying yeah. to lie that uh, I was, I think I threw away my boots. I was so upset. You know, I was crying like, ah, because I was facing a lot of pressure from people like, ah, you said they picked you. But why are you guys here? Six months, one year. Mm. It was even going to one year and like two months because it was like the next year, February or March, we traveled again. So it was like yeah. one year and two months. So... A lot of people were speaking, you know, but oh. that was okay. it. But when you finally, you know, were able to travel and then you got there, you know, and you started um, life in Bohemians, you know, I think that was in 2018. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, I think about 2018, yeah, 2018, 2017, I think so. Like this. Yeah. So how easy or difficult was it for you to, you know, now adapt to life in Czech Republic, coming from Nigeria, you know, now living in a different country, different language, different food, you know, how easy was it to adapt? Uh, for me, it wasn't that easy, you know, but I already placed my mind because this, this is the kind of person I am. When I want something, I, I'll put my focus and everything out. You know, as a guy from, uh, a nobody from Nigeria, you know, when you have the opportunity, because... This, there's uh, like millions of players who from Africa who wants just this opportunity. So I was privileged to get one. So I don't want to use misuse this opportunity. So I was so really focused, like so focused. I think I, I stayed in Europe for about two years before I went back home for my first trip. So I was so focused. I was, you know, was ready. I think we went back during like uh, almost summer time. So it was different from the winter, you know. So it was like not cold. Mm. I was so focused. You know, the food, I think there were like some African food there, some African restaurants. So um, there was one of my friends in uh, Bohemia. He was playing from the senior team. He's a Ghanaian. If you know him, he's called Benjamin Tete. Yes, yes, I know him. Yes. So he was helping me a lot because he was playing for the first team. I was playing for the junior team, you know. So, you know, mm. when you meet your African brother, so you know the, the vibe and everything. Yeah. So... He helped us a lot, me and this guy from Better Assurance. So it was for me, it was easy because when you, I was not just alone, I was with someone, you know, the vibe will be there, you know, go out together, eat together and everything. But it was still difficult, you know, in terms of the type of play, you know, now you have to go to Europe when they play like, uh, you know, possessions, they have to give you drills, shooting. You know, in Africa, we don't do shooting drills. We just call, hey, take the ball, joke like five lap and you start to train, you know. But the training was like different from Africa. So with time, you know, I get like get used to the trainings. All right. Um, good good to hear. Okay. So let me now ask you, um, from from there, you know, signing for Bohemians, the playing in the youth team, well, how did you progress? You know, what was the next step um, that happened in your journey? Yeah, when we came for came to Bohemians, we were still on trials. We didn't sign like they we we signed, but it wasn't like a, a profess like a first team contract. You mm. understand? We were there, but we were there, and my agent was the one paying us, not the club. 
Oh, wow. You understand? Yeah, that's how they make the deal. Like, we came and my agent was paying us, me and the guy. So the, the club just gave us the... To show ourselves, like, they had a... Uh, I don't know, they had a contract. Like, if they decide to keep us, they just need to pay some few amounts of transfer fee, you understand? So it was something yeah. like this. So when we played, I played for under 21 for like two two months or three months. So I was the highest goal scorer of the under 21. I scored 11 goals. The highest goal scorer and the best player for under 21. Yeah. So uh, my agents discussed with them like, okay, now you can see the quality of the player. He scores a lot of goals. So now you need to give him uh, the first team contract, you understand? Yeah. But they were like, ah, okay, we will give him the contract, but... We want him to stay and play for the under-21. You understand? And my agent said, okay, but let him train with the first team. You understand? I can be training with the first team and possibly playing the games for... And they said, no, no, play. You just need to play, train for under-21. And I told my agent that, hey, for me, it's even better for me to go to a third league than to play for under-21. Because for me, under 21, it's just like a youth youth team. It's not uh, like a professional games and everything. Yeah. And they break the contract. So I went to, I think I went to third league, Olympia, Radutin. I think it was like this, yeah. We went, we went there on test. The, I think the owner was a Russian guy. He has yeah. a lot of money. It's like a mafia because... If he wants to pay you salary, he don't give you in your account. He just bring a bag of money <laughs> and just call you to his to his office. Like, okay, you come. Um, oh, your money, ta 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 ta. Okay, how much is it? Take. They give you cash <laughs> like this. You know, you know, this is how yeah. he was paying us uh, salary because he's the guy is crazy guy. So we went there. We went there on test. Uh, we went there. They said, okay, we played four games and I scored seven goals. Four games. Mm. And it was like, wow, I want this guy. Me, it was like, I personally, like him, himself, I'll give you a, a goal bonus. It wasn't in my contract because of the way I scored the goals. They were like, ah, I'll give you some personal goal bonus, you know? Mm. So that's how we signed. Every, every, every month I was scoring maybe six goals when we start the league. I think I scored about 24 or if I don't know 24 goals. Yeah, 24 goals in 33 games. Yes. And I had so many assists. I don't know. I don't know if they put the assist. To, so I scored 24 goals and he paid me until he didn't give me all the money. Because every month I was scoring like six every month. Six, 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 six. The first month he paid me the full goal bonus, the six goals. The second month, yes. And the third month, he stopped to pay me. He was like, hey, because <laughs> every time he comes to the training, he wants to give everybody the salary. And when I come out, I come out with a lot of money, you know, and all the players, they start to see. Mm. And he said, ah, because every month you say, yeah, fortune, every month you score six, five. This is a lot of money, you know, because I, I promise I will pay you, but it wasn't your contract. So he stopped. I think he stopped when I scored uh, my... 15th goals, then he stopped. He didn't give me the rest money. So I appreciate because this money was so helpful to me because for my family and everything. So I wasn't like uh, stressed or start to give him problem because first of, first of all, it wasn't even in my contract. He just promised me, you know? Yeah. So that was it. Played uh, the third league and after I went straight to second league. I didn't go from like Third to first, I took like a step, you know. Yeah. I think I went to the second league. I think it was Usti Nalabem. I think, yeah. Yeah, I went to Usti. So it was really difficult for me in the second league because not because of the football games, because now they have players, a lot of players there, you know, like big names, like, you know, who, like, they are number one, number two. I think I was, like, the third striker there. So it mm. was really, really difficult for me to have play time and everything. And for me, if I don't play football, I feel so upset. Like, I feel if I'm on the bench and I see people playing and I feel like I can do much better and I don't get a chance. So I think I was having a little bit of problem in the team, you know. The coach loved me, but 
I wasn't playing. I was having some few minutes. I think I scored so f- maybe five or few goals. I don't know in the in the second league. It was really really difficult for me. But in generally, I wasn't scoring goals, but I was playing good. Mm-hmm. But on the norms, nobody cares about how you play. That's how football is now. Nobody cares how you imparted the game, how you played, or the quality you showed on the pitch, your difference, or they just want to care about, uh, ah, did this guy score? Or, ah, he made assists. Yeah. Uh, even if you played like shit, like really, really bad in the game, yeah, and they, you check, score. You know, they check the score and they say, ah, he scored two goals. Wow, good player. But in the game, they didn't see, they didn't watch the game to see if you played good or not. Mm. So during that time, I wasn't scoring goals, but I was playing good. But for me, in Europe, you know, when you don't score as a striker, so if even if the striker, the other striker scored and he's playing shit, they will always put him. You know, they must always put him. So there's mm. one guy, I think I don't, I forgot his name. He was scoring goals. I think he scored about eleven or twelve goals. So I had problems. Then I went to first league, uh, Cheske Bujovice. I went to first league. First half of season wasn't great for me because I wasn't playing. I was like the smallest striker. They're like very young. They have mm. big players. They want to stay in the league. So the coach don't want to trust young players. But when mm. I go into the game, I think my first game was I played against Slavia, Olajnka, and uh, I played good, but I didn't score. I think I had two goals. I missed two goals. Like two clear chances, I make the dream and I shoot the body, keep us safe and everything. And the coach said, Ah, you are not ready, you know, you are not mm. ready for the first league. So they had to loan me back to the second league. So I, I think I went to Vlashim. I went to Vlashim. The coach there loves me so much. I wasn't playing like a striker there. So I was playing like this free role, like a number 10. I think I scored few. Maybe, I don't know how many goals I scored, but I was playing really, really good. Like, if you watch the game, you know, ah, this guy was, you know, I'm um, like, in the team, I'm big difference from every other player. So mm-hmm. I played really, really good. As I went back to my, my parents' club, Cheske Bujovice, I went there because I, I did good on loan. So I went there. The first two games, the coach don't want to play me. The first two games, they lost the first one, I think. The second one, they drew. I called him to the... to. I said, hey, I want us to have a meeting, you know. I said, uh, if you don't want to play me, just tell me I want to leave. Because I, I, I know the players here, I can do much more better than them. So if you don't want to play me, just tell me so I can tell my agent so I can go to somewhere else I can play. And the coach was like, okay, 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 don't worry, we'll see what we can do. I said, fine. The next weekend, we were playing Banik Ostrava. This game, me, myself, I knew the coach wants to set me up. Mm. I knew. Because this team we were playing was, I think they are like the top five in Czech Republic before. I don't know now. But Banik Ostrava, they were really, they were they won the first two games in the league. They were really, mm. really good. We were playing at home. And the coach told me, ah, you are going to start. Me, myself. You know when the coach wants... You know, for example, now, I went to the coach to complain. Ah, if you don't put me here, and we are playing against Madrid, he wants to put me in the game. So he wants to, you know, he wants to set me up. And me, myself, I understand. I even told my agent. I said, ah, now you see, we played one uh, relegation team. He didn't play me. But now we are playing against the, the big <laughs> side. Now he wants to start me in the game. Ah, my agent said, ah, just play, just play. I said, okay. Mm. We played, I start the game. We, we played two strikers. I was behind. Was playing. They scored. They, first, they scored us 2-0. Two, two you know? But I was playing well. Normally, if I was not I was not playing well, the coach would take me out after half time, you know? Mm. In the second half, I make one amazing solo goal. They gave me the ball behind. I controlled the ball. I, I think it was like three players. I dripped past three players. And mm. I scored. Amazing goal. I think it was like the best goal of the week. That I think so. I think they gave me best goal of the week. Amazing goal. Three players. Dream and I scored the, the goal. We lost the game. I think it was like 2-1 or 3-1. I cannot remember. From there, this was like my breakthrough. This goal against Bani Kostrava. The next game, I scored another goal. And the next two... I think I scored three straights. 
or I don't, I cannot remember. I think we played Ostrava, and after we went to play Slovako, I don't know. But I played, I scored, you know, yeah. from there. Yeah. From there, then they start to, the coach was like, ah, you see, it was now, the coach starts using me as an example. You see, ah, Fortune told me if it, I don't play him, he would leave. But you see, I played him now, he showed his quality, you know. I was like, hey, you are capping, you know, you just set me up. I knew. He said, but you see, this is the kind of players I want. Like, show me, I need to play you. And if I play, show me you want to play. You know, you need to deserve to mm. stay in the lineup. I think from this game, that was how I just break through uh, to the first mm. team, Czech Republic. I think uh, I finished the season. I think I played half season. I didn't even play the full season, I think. I think I played like, I didn't play, I scored 11 goals or I don't know. I think I scored about uh, 10, or I don't know. I, I knew I scored a few goals. That was it, you know? Yeah. I think, yeah, I scored a few goals. I think you scored 10 for um for Cheske, yeah, in half season. Yes, I played half season. For me, it was really, really good. And I was like, in my head, you know, when he, in my phone, a lot of agents start to call me. Wow, good player. We want to take you this, we want to take you that. For me, I already trust my agent from Africa and Nigeria too. So uh, I'm not this kind of person like, ah, because this one promised me to take me this, I will leave my agent because of, I see a lot of players who like to do this. Ah, because because I knew it took me from Nigeria. So I just give him benefit of the doubt. Like, okay, with the way I performed this first round, so I need him to show walking, you understand? Show is... But at the same time as a player, I know if... You don't play good. If you don't have numbers, there's no way your agent can help you. Unless you are like a really, really big player. Like, very, very big player. But if you are like a young player and you don't show anything, there's no way your agent will say, okay, come, let me take you to Real Madrid. Let me take you to... There's no chance. You have to show something, you understand? And this time I said, okay, I scored 10 goals. Fine. First time I was playing the first league, like the first season of first league, you know? So, I think I had offers from Slavia, Praha. I think Olainka was still there. I had some few friends there. Peter Olainka was there. I had uh, uh, Ubong Upai was there, was still my friend. I had one from, I had one offer from Sparta, Praha. But then, they said they wanted to sign me, but uh, I need to stay on loan. Like, I'll come like the next season. But me, the Nigerian boy in me i was not patient enough i was like no i want to leave you know i want to make the move i want to mm. so that's how i went to friends for 1.5 million for me it was good you know was so happy come came to budapest and you know that's how life started then i that you know when you start to, when you make the transfer that's when you know ah you have to be serious more you know but wasn't that great I think I scored a few goals. My first two games was excellent against UPS, top performance and everything. But then, now they start to request a lot from me. You know, now they don't want me to play like a free role. They want me to play like a, like a striker, like just the number nine. They don't want me to come deep to take the ball because it's what I want, to take the ball. Mm -hmm. They just want me to stay with the defenders and make runs and... So I wasn't feeling like comfortable with the ball, you know, because I was feeling like they were trying to hold back my qualities, you know. So I played, 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 played. I think we, I, I went the half season, so we won the league and the cup. Then after we started preseason, I think I scored two goals in the preseason or three goals. Then after I was like, I went to the coach, like, I feel uh, you're not giving me more opportunity to play, you know, because I feel I deserve more. Because first, I'm a new player, you know, I just came uh, 1.5 million and you should give me like, okay, more chances to play, even if like not from the start, but few minutes, you know, so I can get into the team. But you're not giving me and we just discussed and my agent just called me like, ah, we have uh, one offer from you, for you, uh, from Vitra Plezin. And basically, we were playing the Champions League qualification when I was in France. Where I was in, 
they had to take me out because I was going to prison. So they took me out from the list because I was going. They already knew I was leaving. So they came back from the... They lost the last round, I think. The last round to go to Champions League. They lost against Caraba or something. Hmm. So they went to Europa League. So I went to Plezin. They won against Caraba the final round. They went to Champions League. For me, it was great. Wow. Let me... Let me sorry. Let me just ask you a question. You know, um, yeah. because before we get into your time at um, Victoria Pizen, um, so joining Ferenc Varos, one point five million euro. You know, as a young player, did did you feel like, ha, you know, if I convert this money to naira now, I'm on uh, almost hundred hundred million, two hundred million. What did I spend for my head? Do you know? Did you feel like a lot of pressure you have to show up because of that money that they paid? Um. I say I yeah, I would say yes because when they signed me 1.5, it was the biggest transfer in uh Cheske Bujovice. I was the biggest. Even till now, I hold the record. They have never signed any player 1.5 before from the club, mm-hmm. you know. But I knew I was going to a club like way bigger than Cheske Bujovice, like millions of times. Because in my team now, they signed player 5 million, 6 million. So it's not like maybe. I'm going there like a star player, like one of the biggest, you know. If maybe they signed me for 15 million and I know uh, I'm the biggest transfer, then I will, I will have a lot of pressure. But then I was like, okay, 1.5. I checked the transfer market from the club, you know. I saw a lot of players signed four, five. And I was like, okay, I'm still the small player, you know, like in the mm. team because I saw a lot of players. But I had the pressure in me because um, the way they spoke with me before they signed me, the coach, the uh, sporting director was calling me like, you know, every time. So I was having this pressure like, let me show, show working. I want to show like my qualities and everything. And this is the kind of player I am. I want to show. I want to show. I need to prove to you that, okay, you didn't just spend 1.5 million for nothing, you know? Yeah. But you know, as a player, you want to show, but sometimes it doesn't work out like the way you yeah. you plan. The only reason, the only thing I'll tell you now that I regretted was like, I wasn't patient enough. Mm. Because I felt like, ah, they signed me for this amount. Okay, they should be playing me. Like, mm. I need to be playing. Like, there are some players, like, they feel like, ah, you, they just signed you. So you have to be playing all the games. So that was on my mind. I was like, ah, I need to play week, week in, week out, week in. I don't need to be playing. If I was like patient enough, like calm, like, okay, you are a new player. They just signed you for four years and everything. So you have to be patient enough. Get some few minutes, try to build your momentum and everything. And But this, I, I wasn't like, I wanted to play because I was thinking like, ah, the way I played in uh, Chess Cape Bujovic is so... I was the star, yeah. So I want to play. I want to play, yeah. I, I want to play, but it didn't, didn't work out like the way I planned. But, you know, it's life. So everything was a process, you know. Mm. So that's how I went to Vitra Plaising, alone. Yeah. Um, sorry, just one more question. But, I mean, even though you did not play as many games as you wanted, you still won, you still won the league, you won the cup, you know. So you did a double in your first season um, with Ferenc Varos. Um, as a player, you know, coming from Nigeria, working your way to Europe and now you're winning trophies in Europe. How did that make you feel? That was my first trophy in Europe. It was so, it was amazing, you know. The feeling was so nice, the stadium, because we have one of the best fans in France Varoche. If they want to go crazy, they are crazy. Like, there are too many fans. Like, we have a lot of fans. So I think we won the game like two games or three games before the end of season. So we were even more focused on the cup because uh, it was the cup we took. It was like it took them like five years or four years to win the cup. It's been long they won the cup. So the focus was more on the domestic cup, you know, because they haven't won it for like three or four years. But the first feeling was when we won the league. I was with my friend. You, I know you should know uh, Andersia City. Yes, Andersia City, yes. Yeah, so we are, you know, same team. So 
was the best feeling for me because I was with him and every time we won the, they gave me the medal, <laughs> celebration. I was like, so this is real, you know, my first trophy, like in Europe, you know, I uh, was like, was amazing. I was like, I was so happy, you know, I was calling my family, calling my wife, you know, <laughs> was really nice. It was mm -hmm. nice. And then we won the cup too. I was like, ah, my first season I did a double. That was great, you know. So mm. it was nice. Amazing, amazing. Good, good to hear that. Okay, let's now move to um, Victoria Prison. So you joined Victoria Prison. I mean, not the biggest team, but is a well-known team. Um, and in that um, season when you were on loan, you got the chance to play in the UEFA Champions League. I mean, this is something that. I'm sure you must have been watching Champions League since back in Nigeria, you know, seeing all sorts of players doing um, big in that competition. And not only did you play in the Champions League, you know, as God will have it, they put you in the same group with Barcelona, Bayern uh -huh. Munich, <laughs> and Inter <I> Milan. <laughs> three, crazy, yeah. three of the biggest teams in the world. You know, yeah, it was what, what, what was it like uh, playing against those teams, playing in the Champions League? Uh, if I could remember, I think when they were making the draws of the group stage, so all the team, all the players in the team were like in the in the dining. We were like having dinner together, so we we're watching the draws. If I should tell you, even our players were so happy they put those three teams in our group. They like they didn't even care. Like ah, we might not go through. They didn't even care about this. They were just concerned about wow. Barcelona, Inter Milan, and uh, Bayern Munich. This is crazy, you know? So when I saw this, I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, God is great, you know? Because yeah. I was in Nigeria watching games, Camp Nou, San Siro, Aris Alena, and everything. I was like, Pfft. so me, myself, I'll be there now, you know, watching the games. I'm playing the games live with Lewandowski, Usman Dembele, Pedri, Gavi, and everything. But then I was so calm because I was like, I need to wait for the day, like when the games to start. I think mm. our first game was with, I think, Barcelona. I think we went yeah, to Camp Nou. Yeah. We went to Camp Nou. Even when our boss was going through the tunnel, like inside the stadium, I was like, really? This is like Camp Nou. I was like, wow. I was so amazed. Like, I was like, is this a dream or what? Hmm. Then we went to the pitch for pre pre match one uh, training. I was just staring at the the seats. I was looking at the stadium like so big. I was like, wow. Like I cannot believe this. Then you see the 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 stadium was so nice. And the next day was the game. Even before the warm-up, I think the stadium was already filled up. I was like, no way, no way. I think it was like 80, 90,000 people in the stadium. You cannot even hear your, even your fellow player speak. You cannot even hear. It was so crazy. I, I think I was on the bench, so I saw Lewandowski came out for one more. Asufati, me and Asufati, we exchanged Jesse. So mm. Asufati, I saw Pedri, I saw Kunde. I saw uh, Pique, I saw uh, Christensen, I saw Jordi Alba. I saw a lot of players, you know. I was like, I saw Frankie. I was like, wow. So these guys, I was not even uh, watching the games. I was watching the player, you know. Like, <laughs> when they give the ball to Usman Dembele, I was just like, wow, this guy is so fast, huh? Because he's so good with the ball. Yeah. I saw him live, like live. It's so far. You don't even know if it's right foot or left foot. Yeah. He can cut you inside, cut you everywhere, you know. And Lewandowski, I think he scored twice. And I saw the goals he scored against us. He scored hat trick, actually. Hat trick, yeah, I have. Like, so simple, you know. I was like, wow. You, you saw a lot of players saying, you start to learn. I said, I was like, if I was in this position, I would try to shoot so hard, like, with all my strength. Mm. But the way he scored the goal, so simple, you just control the ball, place uh, bottom corner, you know, our keeper cannot even do anything. I was like, mm. this was 
like the difference between Africa and Europe uh, players. They have too much techniques, shooting and everything. But it was Camp Nou was one of my best, like the best feeling because uh, I love Barcelona too. But I'm not supporting them. I love them because of Lino Messi. But mm. when I went there, I was like my best feeling ever. Yeah, mm. it was so, so sweet. I mean. You in that game, you eventually came off the bench. You know, you went on the bench throughout. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I came. When when the coach when the coach told you, yeah, fortune, get dressed. You are coming on. What was going through your mind? I were making warm up on the side, and they just called me. Ah, come. In my mind, I was like, okay. <laughs> I knew some of my friends are watching this game from Nigeria. I saw uh, they know. <laughs> so I was like, hey, come on. You have to show a bit of uh, quality. You know. I know the, the team is... We are, we were losing, I think, 3-0 or 4 already. I don't know. But I was like, come on. I think they gave me one ball. Then this guy, Gavi, wanted to take the ball from me. And I said, I need to show you I'm an African. I hit him, you know. I gave him my body and I took the ball, you know. I was like, yes, you know, I know. I went one against one against Kunde. I made some drills, some pass. I think I have some few highlights in my Instagram. I make some passes, you know. I was like, I didn't even care after the final win, so I didn't even care about the losing. <laughs> but I was concerned. I was satisfied. Like I said, okay, at least I showed some some things. Like if you should watch games, ah, this guy is okay. At you least, know? at least you show them that yes. you can, you said you can compete with them. Yes, I can see. Yes, you understand. I wasn't like, ah, give me the ball, just lose it. You know, there are some players that were like, oh, look, look, look at, look who's coming, look who's coming, Skunde, ah, let me just, before you do one thing, you lose the ball, you start to press, look. But I think I, I should score one goal in the Champions League. It was against uh, Inter Milan at home. Mm. They gave me the ball. I I think this guy was in my back. I think it was Kriner. I think he was there then. This guy who went to PSG, the defender, screener, he was screener or no? They gave me the ball. I turned. Yeah. So, I think it was raining, so the ball slipped more. Mm. Onana just came to... I wanted to chip the ball. I just... I was almost there to chip the ball. Then Onana just collected the ball. Even my friends was upset. They were like, ah, Onana, you cannot even let your African brother just call you. <laughs> <You're> just... <laughs> They say, you cannot let your African brother to just call you just one or not like he wants to score you two, just this one chance. <laughs> but generally, for me, it was great. Mm. The feeling, the music, when you start to hear the champion, you feel like it's just like you're playing in the World Cup. Mm. Champions, it was so, like, for me, I had the best feeling. It wasn't good because we lost with, like, too much margins, you understand? But the feelings, even the players were satisfied, you know, playing with, you have the, the the chance, because it might not even happen again. You might not have the chance to play with these players anymore. Yeah. So playing with them for the first time, like playing, it's a privilege, you know, to see them live, to admire, yeah. to see the qualities of these players. Like for me, it was good, you know, but yeah. I saw Lukaku first time in my life to score in Inter Milan. It was so big. Like, I knew it was big on the TV, but not the way... <laughs> in <I> real think. life. <laughs> yeah, but when I saw him in real life, it was so huge, like, big. Like, his foot was so big. I was like, wow. So this is Lukaku. I mm. saw this guy, Martinez. I saw uh, a lot of players. I was like... Pfft. I was like, for me, I was satisfied. Like it was like a dream come true because I want to play. I I dream. I didn't I didn't know I would play in the Champions League, but I was just dreaming. But God just did it for me, you know. So that was it. No, amazing, amazing, fantastic, fantastic story. You know, fantastic memories um, from the Champions League. Uh, okay, so let's quickly move forward to this last season. Um, you played on loan in Hapoel Peta Tikva. Um, correct yeah. me if I mispronounce it. Um, yes, in Israel. Yes. Um, so this season, not you know the best season for even the club. I think you guys unfortunately got relegated. Relegated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know how how was that experience? You know, playing, battling relegation. How how is that experience? At first, it was 
when the coach because they sacked the coach the first coach so i mm. went there um i was having problems with my knee because um in czech republic i was training on the plastic grass so i had fluid on my knee mm. so at first we went there i uh, went there to israel the coach liked me a lot i liked the coach because he was so supportive you know so then i was playing like a I think I almost played everywhere in this club, in this mm. uh, in this Japan perspective. I played like a winger, left winger. I played like a right winger. I played like a striker. I played like a number ten, like behind the striker. Mm. Then, if the coach wants to play like a, a, a one number six and two number eight, I played like one of the number eights. Mm. So I, the only position I didn't play is from six down. Mm. Six number five, and that's where I didn't play in this team. So the coach was like, because the coach knew I had qualities on the ball, with the ball. So the coach was like, okay, he wants someone who can keep the ball, who can drag opponents to come. Mm. So I was playing more of a winger then. So I was trying to do the job, like create chances. I didn't even score much in the first round. I was just playing simple, you know, like creating chances for my players. Played against Maccabi Haifa, good performance against Maccabi Tel Aviv was really for me. I would say my best was the first round, but I didn't. Score, I scored just one goal. For me, I would say the best performance in Israel was the first round, but I scored mm -hmm. one. Then in the second round, my agent told me like, ah, nobody cares about this. What whatever you're trying to do now, like this creating chances, dribbling, taking players on and everything. You have to bring numbers, you understand? You have to... Mm. I think they sacked the coach. We're really in the pressure, like, really, really pressure. Like, you know, we're battling education and they sacked the coach. They brought a new coach. And the coach came, played me in the first game. We lost against um, Ashdod. I cannot remember. And the coach took me out. Because the players... And my team were complaining, like, ah, Fortune's playing all the games, you know, ah, you need to rest him, you need to do this, maybe we'll win, you understand? And me, I don't complain, you know, I just say, okay, it's your club, so I'm here alone, so do whatever you want. They took me out, and we lost again. They took me out. I, I think I didn't even play this game. I was in the bench all through. We lost. Then the third game, they, I was still on the bench. Away game. So, I think it was against Maccabi Rena, I think, yeah? So, we were losing 1-0. I think it was like last 15 minutes. Ah, the coach just called me. Ah, Fortune, go on one more, blah, blah, blah. Come inside the game. Then I scored one goal with my left foot. I think from there, I started to score every game. I think I scored like three straight matches. Then I, the cup game, I didn't score. Then I scored again. I think I scored five five goals or six, I don't know, with one or two assists, I don't know. But for me, it was the first round. But the second round was a lot like more of the goals and everything was good. So for me, uh, going to Israel was uh, the best decision for me because mm. it brought out like the qualities I had when I was back then in uh, Cheske Bujovice. Mm. Yeah, because... When I went back, when I was in Israel, that's when my club now called me back to come for precision and everything. So wish I might stay and everything. So for me, it was really, really good. So now I just hope, let's see how the situation is. Okay. Um, I mean, you scored, I think you scored six goals eventually, you know, and like you said, towards the end of the season was when it really picked up in the second round. Um, but now you're back um, with Ferenc Varos. Um, okay, looking at your time, you've played in Czech Republic, you know, third league, second league, first league. You've played in yeah. Hungary, you know, yeah. you've played um, in Israel as well. What would you say is your favorite, you know, league to play of all these ones? My favorite league? Uh, favorite league from three of them, I would say Czech Republic because of the way I performed there. Mm. Yeah, it was so nice. The way mm. I played in Czech Republic was really, really 
was for me was the best, the best yeah. level. So I haven't played much of the league games here in Hungary. It's nice. Um, maybe I would say East Dre, but I, I didn't say that because of the team I was. When the pressure, you know, was if maybe yeah. I was in a better team like the top five, four teams, maybe I would pick Israel, you know. But yeah. I just picked uh, Czech Republic because of the way I played there, you know, mm. how yeah. I played. Yeah. Okay. And you know, going through your journey of your career so far, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned? Um, first, you just need to be patient. Mm. Just have to be patient, no matter what. Not that patient, but you have to be patient for the first time, you know. And you just have to adapt to whatever the club, the coach wants you to. Mm. Because that was my biggest problem when I came to Hungary. The coach was always telling me, okay, Fortune, do this. But I was so adamant, I was so telling him, like, ah, this is how I play. Like, I'm mm. telling the coach, like, this is how I play. But the coach wants me to do the way he wants, you know, but me, I don't want. So it was it was a mix. So now I learned my lesson, like, okay, no matter how, if you are a runner and the coach wants you to be uh, someone who construes the ball, just try to please the coach because in everything, the coach makes final decision. He's yeah. not even the president of the club or the uh, CEO or the sporting director or anything. The coach makes the decision. So I think the two lessons I, I learned was like, you have to be patient enough and you have to try to admit your, your style to the way the coach wants you to play. Mm, well said, well said. Um, okay, so far in your career, what would you say is the best goal that you've ever scored? The one that you think of the goal like this, you're like, wow, you know, <laughs> I can't believe Nami will score that goal. I think I have two goals. Two mm. goals. Um, I would say one against uh, Vitora Plezin. Against or four? Against. When I was playing against, uh, when I was playing Cheske Bujovice in Czech League, oh, okay. I played the game. They cross the ball, then I make the scissors kick like this. This one was, uh, this was my, my, this one, one of these. And the best goal again, I would say against Slovasco. We were losing 2 1 with red card. We had red card. And I scored two goals in this game. We won 3 2 from losing 2 1. Wow. I think I made the goal from the midline. It was a solo, uh, solo goal. I, mm. I, they played the ball and I just bent my head and I give the defenders my body. So I was mm. going alone and mm. I chipped the ball. This goal won the game. And I think this goal gave me the best player of the month. Yeah. Mm. In Czech. So for me, this was one of the favorites. It mm. was nice. Okay. Um, and, I mean, you played in the Champions League, you've played in um, other leagues as well. Who would you say is the toughest opponent that you've ever played against that you're like, oh, more this guy, free me now. Like, you know, that opponent that just gave you tough time. Uh, I think more of, uh, I would say, uh, uh, I think in the Champions League, I think it's Christensen because he was using his head, not his body. Mm. It was reading your mind, like reading how you play. This, this is how he's, he was defending. He's not going to do as with you, like he wants to hit you or something. He just lets you take the ball as a striker and he just intercepts. That's how he plays. So it was more of like, because me, you know, first game, Champions League, like, I want to use all my strength, you know. When he comes, I will show him I'm a Nigerian guy, I eat fufu and everything. I want to show all my strength, you know. But him, just just take the ball easy from you, you know, just easy. It was really difficult too, this guy, Chris Sensei. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. And what would you say is your best stadium that you've played in, you know, of all the stadiums? The best. I said Camp Nou. Mm, Best. I, I'm not. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah, you know yes, that yeah. that stadium is massive. I went to Spain last year and I visited Camp Nou. It wasn't. They were not even playing match. Just I just went there on a random day, and you just look at how 
big you know the stadium is you know i can imagine when when there's now eighty thousand people inside that stadium you know is it must it must be amazing um okay and um one more question that i'll ask you before we go into a, a game um you know looking at your career you know so far um is there any club that you have as your dream club that ah, if one day I can even just play one match, if I can just play one match for them, you'll be satisfied. Is there any club? Um, dream club? I would say Chelsea because I love Chelsea so much. Like, mm. so, so much. Um, I love Chelsea, so mm. I would say Chelsea. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, fantastic. We've we've spoken about your background. We've spoken about your journey. Your story is so interesting. You know, normally we've already gone far in a conversation and we've just covered your story. Uh, but let's let's play one game um, very quickly um, before I ask you some more um, football questions and then we'll round off. Um, this game is quick fire. So I'm going to ask you a question. Just give me the first answer that comes to your mind. You know, nothing to think about too much. Okay. Who is your favorite Nigerian player right now? Osime. Mm, Victor Osime. Okay. Who is your favorite coach of all time? Anywhere, from anywhere in the world? Mourinho. Jose Mourinho. Okay. What is your favorite food to eat before? I would say uh, pasta. Pasta? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you could have any superpower in the world, what superpower do you want to have? Uh, invisible. Mm, invisible. Okay. Um, do you have any superstition, any pre-match routine that you must follow before a game? I must listen to my music. Mm, okay. What kind of music do you listen to? Afro beats. I just put my airport on my ears and everything. Mm, okay. Um, Nike or Adidas? Nike. Nike. Okay. Jollof rice or fried rice? Jollof rice. Um, okay. Rice or swallow? Depends. If after a game and I feel like I, I just take swallow, but most times I eat rice. Mm, okay. Lagos or Abuja? Lagos. Lagos. Casual clothes or traditional clothes? Oh, casual clothes. Mm, okay. Shoes or wristwatches? Shoes. Okay. Um, Champions League or AFCON? Champions League. Mm, Champions League. Okay. Um, let's play another game. Another game very quickly. This game is Would You Rather? Would You Rather? So I'll give you two options and you just let me know which one you prefer. Okay. Okay. Goal or assist? Goal. Mm, okay. Screamer from 40 yards. Or you dribble four players and you score. Dribbling. Mm, dribbling. Mm, okay. Um, highest goal scorer or player of the tournament? Highest goal scorer. Mm, okay. Highest goal scorer or winning goal in the final? Highest goal scorer. Highest goal scorer. Okay. Would you rather be the best player on the worst team in your league? Or the worst player on the best team in your league? Best player in the worst worst team. Mm, okay. Um, would you rather play in the rain or play in the snow? Rain is fine. Play in the rain. Okay. Would you rather play in the rain or play in the very hot sun? In the sun. In the sun. Ah, okay. Would you rather have your own signature boots or have an award that is named after you? An award after me. Mm, okay. Would you rather you play every match of the season and you don't score a single goal or you don't play football at all that season? No, play and don't score. <laughs> play and don't score. Okay. Uh, would you rather you start every game but you know that the coach is always going to sub you off, no matter how many, how well you are doing. Every game is sub you off, or you don't start at all, 
but you know that he's always going to bring you to finish the game. Start every game and the coach mm. take me out. Mm. Okay. Um, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Messi. Ah, that one was very sharp, simple, <laughs> simple for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so that's that's would you rather? Let's let's go back quickly um to some questions, football, your journey, a few questions, and then we'll wrap up. Um, okay, so now you are back at your club, um, Ferendraros, you know, your parents' club after loan spell. Um, pre-season training, you know, do you what what can we expect, you know, from you in the future? What can we look forward to? Do you have any plans? Um, um right now. For me, it's like a, it's a, I'm in a very good situation, to be mm. frank. Uh, we just came back from camp from Austria like three days ago or so. So I think we are still traveling in two days. We are going back for the second camp mm. because our first uh, qualification game is like on the 22nd of July or 23rd, mm. I think. So the previous camp, we played two games. I scored one goal. Played from the mm. side, from the left wing. Mm-hmm. So the situation for me, it's good, in a good hands now. So let's see. I think I have some little bit, uh, some offers or something. But I just want to see how the situation is. Because we have a new coach here. Mm. He's, uh, uh, he's from he's, uh, from Holland. So let's see how the situation is. So if I stay, mm. okay. But if I don't, I know... I'll be in a very good place if I don't mm. stay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, you said you you play from the left wing sometimes. Sometimes you play number ten. You can play as a as an eight. You can play as a number nine. You know, of all these positions, which one is your favorite? You know, if you could from choose. Mm. So your favorite is from the left wing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, and you know, looking forward to your future you know your your journey you know you're still i think 25 years old um and you know there's still you can see ronaldo is playing at 39 so you can even still play another 10 plus years if if you want you know um okay. what would you what would you say is maybe the one goal that you want to achieve in your career something that you know you really want to achieve uh i think i want to like play uh uh, I think I need to achieve this uh, consistently playing like for a long time, you know, not like uh, play a few games and after you go on some go on loan and you don't play. And mm. after, uh, because I knew when I signed in France, I knew how my market value was really, really high. Mm. But in the few years now, I didn't play. Apart from me going to Israel, Maybe when they update the transfer market, maybe it will go up a little bit because of how I played in Israel. But uh, I I need to achieve this, like the goals, like to play consistently in a very long time. You know, mm. what I want. Mm. All right, all right, okay. Um, let's play one more game quickly, and then I'll ask you my final two questions. Um, so this game is, do you remember? You know, so I'm just going to mention something that might have happened in your career. And if you remember, tell us about it. Do you remember the first award that you ever won as a young player? Yes. uh, I remember, I think it was in my grassroots team. I was the, I would play the tournament and I was the highest goal scorer. And my coach bought me, was it two pairs of jersey, like a Mm. complete set? And one, um, I don't, I forgot the model of the boots, but bought me one small boots, you know, mm. they gave me the present and everything. I think we did end of year and they gave me this package. Mm. So that was it. Mm, okay. Do you remember your first ever boots, you know, first ever boots that you had that you were playing with? I think it was, ah, I forgot. Was it Puma? Mm. I think Puma. Puma. I think Puma. It was orange and white. Mm. If I could remember, I think so. Yeah. Mm. Um. Or do you remember the first hat trick that you ever scored in your career? Hat trick. I scored hat trick before. 
Yes, in my career, yes, on the 21. Yes, against uh, Jablunek, I scored four goals, I think. Mm. I think, yeah. I, was... you're, you're, you're right uh, of the game. You won 5 1 against Jablonek, you know. Scored. Yeah, but I don't know how many yeah. goals I scored, but I know no, I it, you was... scored three. In, it was three in that game. It was three? Ah, okay. Yeah. You know, because and I, I think. I remember this game because after this game, I was thinking that they would give me the first team contracts. Like, I would mm. play because the coach was there. So I was hoping, like, okay. Since my agent already told him, like, this guy have good quality, so you have to let him to stay. But I caught these goals and the, the coach was still crazy. So, I was like, <laughs> you know, I think what was even more impressive is that in that game, you only played 28 minutes. Yeah, I came in. Yeah, I came in. Yeah. yeah. And you scored a hat trick. You know, fantastic, fantastic one. Maybe this one. Do you know the teammates that you have played the most games with in your career? My teammates. That you guys have played. I can give you a clue. You've played 49 games with this guy in two different teams. In two different teams? Yes, but you've played 49 games total with him. Uh, Is he African, yeah? No, he's not African. In two different teams? Yeah. Ah, oh, two different teams in Czech Republic or what? In, yes, in Czech, yeah. Two different teams. He is a, he is a Czech. He is a Czech player. He is a defender. Is a defender. Yeah. Ah, David uh, Bruka or what's his yes, name? Yes, yes, David Bruka. Yes. <laughs> ah, yes, I David Bruka. Yeah, he's my guy. Okay, and finally. Do you remember the biggest win that you've ever had in your career, that you've been a part of, the biggest win? The biggest win? I don't... Is this the 5-1, no? No, it's bigger than that. The biggest win? Yeah. Uh, I cannot remember. Yeah. Your biggest win was 10-0 um, against... Ah, against, against Vlashi. No. I remember because... We scored ten, and our coach did like this. I know the coach. Uh, mm. I was in, I was in Ustin Alabem. Yes, yes. You played but against. I forgot who? the team. I forgot the team. Okay, you, I forgot. The, it I, was, I think I scored one or two goals. I don't you know. You scored two goals in that game. Yes, it was against yes. FK FK Brandis. Yes, I remember because when we scored the tenth goal, our coach did like this. So mm. now I, I just record. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. All right. All I right. scored two. My friend Yuba scored too, I think so. Mm. All right, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, it's been great talking to you. You know, we've we've talked about serious stuff, we've joked, we've we've laughed. Um, now to round up, you know, um, of course, there are young boys, young girls that watch this video. You know, people that are probably maybe they are in Nigeria. Their dream is to go to Europe, is to play professional. You know, to play Champions League, just like you've done. Um, what would be your advice to that young person that is aspiring to achieve, you know, what you've achieved? What's your advice? Uh, I would say, uh, first of all, you just need to be prayerful. That's the mm. first thing. You just need to be prayerful. You just need to work hard and uh, set your mind straight. Like, prepare your mind for whatsoever is coming, you know, because... Most times, most players they are not prepared. They can just mm. the, the the opportunity can just come and they are not ready, you know. And you just need to be focused and place your mind on what you really want. You don't need to have different uh, priorities like ah, I want to play football. Ah, I want to be a musician. Oh, I want to play. Uh, I want to do some internet flow. I want to do something. You no, know, you need, just mm. you just have to place your because yeah. I I know why I'm saying it because when I was playing when when I was in Nigeria playing, I had friends who was doing stuff like that. But I was I was so focused like I don't mm. do anything. I, most times they go to call, club parties and everything. But me, I just stay. Mm. I just stayed like just because I was so focused on football, and mm. I knew a lot of people were saying. Ah, you just carry both well, I say now your papa and I bomb ball, you know, you know mm. one, then jolly one, one train, money afternoon. But I, I didn't really care about this. I was focused, you know. 
and be prayerful too. So I was prayerful. My mom supported me. Mm. So that's just it. You have to be patient and don't give up. No matter mm. what, you just have to strive for the best. Amazing, amazing. That's that's very, very good advice. I, I, I will say that. Um, and then um, finally, you know, I, I want to be doing this now. Whenever I talk to a player, um, I want you to recommend another Nigerian player. You know, now that you've come on my show, you've spoken to me, you know, we, we know each other small now. You know, um, can you recommend another player that you think I should talk to, you know, and I should hear their story? You know, if you can recommend I another have, Nigerian. I have two players. These two, they are my good friends. Mm, okay. Like, uh, for example, I, this guy, you should talk with him, um, Benjamin uh, Tanimu. Oh, He's okay. my friend. The latest, play- latest Super Eagles player. Yeah. 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 He's my really, really good friend. Even when he was coming back from the camp, we wanted, we planned uh, a game to play, but he came back late and I already traveled because we mm. had preseason. So I came back early. If not him, there's one of my friends again. Uh, his name is. Uh, Etiosai Godaro, Gospel. Okay, I, I know him. He's in Super Sports United, I think. Yes, he's my. He's, this one is my really f- like good, good friend. Even mm. when we were now, we are talking. He's sending me message, you know. So ah, okay, he's my good friend. He's a striker too. Just, maybe you can speak with him first. He's really mm. good, so maybe you can hear his side of okay. story too. The, then, yeah. thank you for that. What I will now ask you is, I would like if you are able to help us, you know, to send a message to him. Let him know that Ego Striker wants to talk to him, and you know. You can help us to facilitate. No, no, no. That is no problem. I will just, after the call, I will just tell him now. It's no problem. I can always say to both of them. All right. Uh, good yes. Friend. Thank you. Um, okay. okay. And then finally, um, before I let you go, um, can you just um, let the people know, you know, let them know what your experience is like, you know, on, on the podcast? Um, hello, guys. So my name is um, Fortune Bassi. Uh, from Nigeria, Edo State, uh, player from uh, Friends Varosh FC. Uh, it was really nice to speak with you guys on the podcast. It was great experience for me. I think it's like the first time I'm doing this, which was so amazing. And I loved uh, how I spoke with uh, Hayo. And it was great experience for me too. So... I hope we do this some other time, which I will really appreciate everything. Guys, you need to subscribe to the channel because you're going to hear a lot of amazing things from different players, which you don't even know about. And it's great to know them through this uh, podcast. So just try to subscribe and like. Yes, thank you very much. Um, It's been a pleasure talking to you. Of course, I'm going to be following your season. I'm going to be, you know, watching you closely. And I, I wish you a fantastic, fantastic um, season to come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.